Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode four of Tame Wild, the home of beasts. But actually, it's episode seven because we had a work accident. So what has happened? I have recorded three episodes without any sound due to Windows Update deactivating my microphone after updating, and me sometimes once or twice in a year, not noticing it in time. I'm very sorry, so we're going to start out today with all the developments that we have had between yesterday and today. So, Tame Wild has nowadays 27 people. We have now, down here, a guild for animal trainers. I felt like an animal trainer's guild hall is something that this fortress has to have as this is the main thing here happening, and yeah. So what then happened really baffled me. Not only did we catch unicorns, we also catched a ton of rhinos. So these are now being trained and being, being domesticated slowly, but steadily. So when we look out into the where is it again, to the knowledge tab, I think here, of training. So our dudes have by now a general familiarity with rhinoceroses, and we already know a few facts about unicorns. So the Banner of Shadow is developing its skills. It's a very, very exciting thing. So we might have war rhinos and war unicorns, and I don't know what. So the Animal Trainers Guild Hall. Over here we store the cages, I think this is no real big news. We have nowadays a fine stone workers district, all with the stockpiles and everything, and the city has been expanded. We're using now Gabros, uh, Gabros stone for the flooring, and yeah, well, what can I say? It's a regular city old thing going on. When we went downstairs, we discovered that over here it's all aquiferous. So, this reminded me so much about my previous adventures with Rockhold, where we had a similar situation. Everything was fine until I realized that I wasn't able to build the city into the direction that I want to. So this is a thing that we really have to, to take care about, because as you see here, things go on like that. Over here we have the farmers and uh, the, farm, the farms and the clothing district. So, looms leather workshops, clothes workshops, and the according stockpiles. So, well, there's still some smoothing work going on because I decided to beauty up the place just for a fluff's sake. So, going downstairs deeper and deeper, we pass the rock salt quarry to be, maybe we use rock salt. So, I haven't fully decided my stone types yet. Going downstairs here, oh, that reminds me that I needed some more quartzite, so let's go for that. Let's drop down this priority and start the game time for the very first time today. So it took me a while to stomach the loss of, uh, of the videos, but uh, well, I can't change it. It's a nice little fortress tour after all. So when we go downstairs further, we have now the Gabbro Quarry, as we are now using this to many, many different uh, purposes. And going downstairs further, 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 comes my whole pride and glory to be. Here we have a magma basin, all prepared. What we are now waiting for is that people grab a bucket and toss some water into this uh, pit here, because we need to obsidianize this uh, piece of wall before we can really use the magma workshop. Since Rockhold, at uh, Rockhold, Tamewild does not have any military, any soldiers, any weapons, I am very, very inclined to be super careful about what could crawl out of these dits. So, well, that's where we stand today. It's the winter of the year 115. Sadly, we missed a few of the main protagonists, so I, I really have a hard time getting these together. So I just want to briefly introduce a few faces. So Dumet Oil Whips, the animal trainer, the second animal trainer in our ranks is Nish. Nish Admire Book is our second animal trainer. They're currently training each other in the guild hall, and as you can see here, I already started to 
make some more sophisticated approach to the things. As we also see, the unicorns and the rhinos keep forgetting their training and things are quite complicated. Speaking about complicated, we have by now some animals pastured on to the rhino pasture to be, but things didn't work out as intended and the rhino here just meandered off and uh, yeah, we had to put it back into a cage. So. There's also a unicorn baby here, or unicorn babies. I don't know how, but uh, obviously we have caught pregnant unicorns, I assume. We're going to uh, pen them in here and, uh, well, we have to drain them. So this brings the story to a fantastic intro for me. I'm really happy to see how things went. We're going to give every one of our animal trainers one of the unicorn babies for training. And well, I think the next logical step that I want to take is that we're going to start to uh, put up a miniature pasture where we start training the rhinos on a free range. Currently we just uh, build up the cages and let the, the animal trainers train there. But I think this uh, system of, uh, of pastures, that's, what, that's the word that was slipping in my way. This system of pastures here will become very interesting over the course of the time. I mean, we obviously have more room into this direction as there is silt into this direction. And we've already found tin ore in the silt layer here, so it is even profitable to do that. So yeah, it's a very interesting run so far. But what's also very important is that our drink stockpiles are a wee bit more depleted than I like them to see. So let's see if we can gather some winter crops. Currently, Rock holds, oh, rock hold. I'm still stuck with season two, no, don't you notice? Tame Wild's biggest issue is the abundance of freaking rhinos and the fact that uh, these rhinos tend to just uh, run around about everywhere. But uh, luckily we have cage traps now for the civilian part. So that seems to be a tame one, I assume? What the hell is happening there? Yeah, it's the trained one. Oof. Such a relief. For a second I was afraid that uh, wild one was roaming through the castle. We had that already, you see? But no, it's just uh, it's just the good boys. So we're going to coral them up here and let's see what we can do. At the very least, this fortress will have an insane production of meat and leather. That's one thing that I can't say. So, yeah, they are fast. Jeez, are they fast. I have no clue. I mean, this is no unhappy animal. This is a happy animal. It runs around as if it was panicked, but it is a freaking happy animal. Right, so, yeah. That's quite the adventure. I mean, let's see. What's really interesting to me is... Boy, war rhinos, it's gonna happen. <laughs> this is so crazy. And we could also go for a war stray giant leopard. Damn, this place is gonna be, be wild, literally. Fun. All right, so, well, one gotta be careful though with turning your creatures into war creatures, they are generally more hostile than they were before. So we gotta be, we gotta be taking care about that. So let's see. Our population has risen to 27 only oh so very recently. As a matter of fact, Tame Wild has had the typical migration stop that I've had experienced from with, with Pretty much every typical fortress so i'm very curious to see if that does mean that some other aspects of normalcy 
would settle in, as in a chance to be assigned a barony. We'll see, we'll see. I would be I would be really excited if we'd be finally be able to put up a barony, because I feel like Tame Wild is a wonderful it's going to be a wonderful addition to the Call of Duty civilization. You're gonna be bolstering up our ranks. I mean, imagine taking revenge on those freaking goblins while riding on war rhinos. I mean, seriously. If that would be a fantasy movie, I'd be I'd be running into the cinema right here, right now. Because I want to see fantasy dwarves riding on rhinos squishing goblins, retaking their home. Come on, that sounds like an epic story to me. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating things because it's my own story, but, uh, you know, drop me a comment if you feel like me. <laughs> that aside, this place is teeming with rhinos. I mean, wild ones. It is, it is crazy. I mean, we have caged the majority of them, but uh, as you see there, there's still two more of them roaming around. And we regularly restock the cages, but yeah, what can I say? I mean, one day the military of this place has to prove itself by by slaughtering wild rhinos or something like that. Check that as a pretty groovy initiation right, uh, right. So, why are my miners not mining, huh? I mean, I put it only onto a tier 2 priority, so probably other things are more important. So... There is a constant intrusion of granite. So I went mining for Gabro and uh, yeah. It's the neighboring biome, obviously. So we still haven't found out about Cavern's tier one. That's another thing. I need to take care of one day. But until then, well, I'm the proud owner of two rhinos. I picked up two females uh, because I didn't want to have to geld them and manage the uh, breeding. We're not there yet. I want to get my people to some more familiarity and, uh, well, probably. And that's where I'm, uh, where I, what. I feel like it would be a fun, fun thing. Probably create a defense system which consists out of wild animals. No, not wild animals. War animals. That the enemy has to path through. It sounds like a crazy cool defense line to me. So, yeah. But we still have to take care of a lot of things. So, well... What's left to say? Did I miss out a spot? Let's check double check, triple check. Well, we have a lot of children in the fort. I mean, looking at this, six of 27 are children or babies. So that is another little issue of Tame Wild because that does lower our total workforce quite substantially. So yeah, we have a few problems at hand, but we also have a lot of uh, tools to deal with them. So why is the baby llama there? I must have forgotten to uh, put it. Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, that's the that's the wrong pasture. So this is uh, really something uh, something that will pretzel up my brain this run, because we have so many different animals that go onto different pastures, and well, it's gonna be quite wild. Not gonna lie. So a Dumit training the rhinos while he's drunk as hell. <laughs> But I mean, I I think it does make terrible much sense to me. I mean, imagine taming something huge as a rhinoceros uh, while being as small as a dwarf. I mean, the alcohol probably is just necessary to gather up the necessary courage. So currently we are just uh, very slow at things. Tame Wild does require more places uh, more, more working hands. This is uh, very obvious. These days we are either busy hauling things or busy building a couple of new bedrooms for the people. The biggest challenge to be is the question where will the city expand into? I mean, I really could expand here into the Dolomite layers, but that would mean a second part of the city would have to emerge on this side. 
I mean, this would be probably logistically less of a nightmare than starting to build into the silt layer here. Especially since the silt layer has some really good qualities for pasturing animals, because we can really use that territory also as a defense measure. So, if anything, we would be tunneling ourselves upstairs. So, come on, let's try that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the best idea that I got. So, basically, setting up another part of the city over here, and then, well, part three of the city, I don't know. I really just don't know. Maybe we're going to add it into this area here. This is, by the way, the big furniture storage pile. Maybe that's going to happen. I haven't fully decided yet, but I I think setting up a new city district over here in this area does do two very useful things. For one, it mines out dolomite that we are using left and right for our things. Don't know what yet, but... Uh, we found another dead dog. Oh, well. I guess he was wrestling with the local rhinos. Um, we're going to dig out more dolomite. That will be very helpful for us. And, uh, yeah, I mean... Why are you guys not mining that out? I, I, it's a priority thing. Okay, that's fine. I was afraid that uh, they might be scared of the rhinos, but... Uh, who needs to be afraid of rhinos? They're well-trained. They know how to behave. I uh, I really picked up the ones that were well trained, and I monitored them a little bit a while before. So you see, I'm sad that we lost three episodes. I still am a little bit uh, whiny about that inside of me, but I felt like at least we have kept the progress. And thus begins the year 116. Welcome. So, the spring is upon us again. I am issuing some harvesting orders onto the pastures, because that is yet another nice side effect of having a lot of uh, animal pasturing space. You passively generate a lot of crops that your harvesters can just pick up now and then. It is a pretty nice side effect there. This fort is something different than the other forts that I've been playing so far, and that's a very, very comfy good thing. So, let's see. With more people arriving at Tame Wild, we have, though, one big problem at our hand. We need to rack up defenses somehow. With the first caravan to arrive, I already bought myself a couple of metal bars that can be used for military purposes, but, well, this is hardly enough to gear out one dwarf. So, well will require more than that. I am I I have high hopes for the magma workshop, but the sad part is until we have the water down there, I can't do anything about that situation because without without the obsidian uh, enclosure here, I'm just way too afraid that something fiery comes crawling out of the depths and murders everybody. While my fort has no soldiers, I am always a bit of a of of in in emergency mode. You you see, every part of this fort can be shut off, if necessary. I mean, I think we're going to go for another little safety measure measure here. So I just have a bad feeling. Let's put up a little bit of floor because I want to have it tidy. And I think this part of the city will have a floor in the near future. And this is going to be a bridge. And we we will be just uh, getting ourselves the capability to, to lock ourselves in. Because, I mean, yeah, we would be locked away from pretty much everything if the main fort would get swarmed. But uh, we could build up from there again until we get the situation back under control. It's where the majority of people is, and if not anything, it would be, roleplay-wise, absolutely something that the dwarves would have. I see them as a very paranoid and uh, mistrustful bunch, and therefore setting up a bridge that will be used to lock them into the inner city until help arrives. Come on, that is such a dwarf thing to do, at least in my book. 
how do you feel? So we're going to go for a lever and the lever will be in the dining hall. I feel like a, an emergency lever at the, at the eating hall is just, uh, just fine. So our animals are growing and I think next episode I will set up the auto butchering, but one thing at a time. I need to think a little bit about things. We also have sandstone cabinets, so let's see. We're using dolomite for the thrones and quartzite for the tables. Slate blocks and gabbro blocks. So, so much hasn't been missed. I mean, it's really sad because we had a lot of uh, fun incidents there with the uh, rhinoceroses. One was uh, running rampant here in the city core once. It was a very, very prickly situation, but nobody got to got to be um, buried after that. So, currently, I can't bring more work down onto the Rockholians. Uh, Rockholians, see, I'm still today. I don't know onto the Tame Wildians, of course. I mean, because they are just all awfully busy. We are filling up our drink stockpiles. Our food stockpiles are majestic at this point, which ain't a bad thing at all. If anything, I feel like we are uh, really working our way up to growing into a real city from here. So, uh, the bridge has been built. So, let's link these things together. And the new living space is ready. Wonderful. So I do expect more new arrivals here. And therefore, it's absolutely necessary to, to prepare more rooms and all. It's uh, very nice to be ahead of uh, events in these things. Therefore, here we go. Big bedroom party. Ten more. That'll help. I mean, at this point, the city here stands at a pretty good spot. We're going to work up here now to set up some some basic infrastructure here as well. So we're going to have a dining hall and well, let's put the tavern up here onto the other side. A big one. Because it's down and important to have your your watering hole and your eating place. And then we're going to go into these directions and uh, carve out some apartments, I'd say. Yeah. I'm not going to go for too much here into that direction before the new people aren't there yet, though. It can't take forever. We are well prepared, though. Stockpiles are looking good. The farms are uh, kicking into... Uh, a bigger production um, level two. The only thing I'm very unhappy with is that the farmers don't have a real good spot to work at. So, well, this is a dent in my plans again because I did plan to do my work here, but uh, well, the aquifer uh, noped me out yet again. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, well, set up the farmer's district into that direction somehow we'll see about that let's see if the path is uh cooperating but yeah it's the typical situation of a fledgling fortress where you have just more work at hand than you have dwarves it shows especially at this point i mean i even have the orderlies involved there but uh, yeah, there's also buckets, they just don't do that. So, but it's a yet. It's just a yet. As soon as this uh, cavity here is filled up with water, we're uh, well, we're well underway. Tell you what, maybe it'll help if I put up a second pit. Sometimes it is quite helpful to have two people at the same time there. I don't know if it is uh, better to have a singular spot or two spots because two spots also generate two jobs and uh, you know ah I don't know. these are the things where I I regularly feel a little bit uh... oh I see now why nobody does that 
We don't have a water source, friends. That's why. Huh. They can't do anything because there's no water. Silly me. So let's dig a well. Oh boy. Duh. <laughs> Sometimes the most obvious solutions are eluding my my brain. Of course. I mean, there is no surface water here on this map, and I forgot about that. There are a couple of cavities here, murky pools, but they, they don't yield any water that they that could be bucketed. So let's dig that. We're going to go down here. Just dig out a good old cavity. Cavity cavity. So we're also going to order the stairs here. Probably going to put up some uh, some floorboards one day of that. But for today, it is uh, really important that we have a, a nice uh, fat pit. So let's do something like that. All right. Since I've learned a little bit more about aquifers, we're going to use this time a little bit of a different technique. So... I'm gonna be tunneling myself here into a center cavity. And we're building sort of a water catching system. In an aquifer, the walls are exuding the water. So we're uh, if you if we would be creating a large, wide open space, that would be actually bad. So we're going like this, and we're also digging the stairs further down. This is a time sensitive uh, work because eventually this whole place will be flooded. And then the only way to deal with it would be screw pumps. I mean, it is not the end of the world. I mean, you can always build some screw pumps, but, uh, well, I personally prefer not to have to. So let's dig out one more of these into that direction. And what I'm trying to do is, wa is as much water generation as possible. So we're digging out small cavities that expose as much wall as possible. There we go. And here on this level, we're doing the same. And we're going to go downstairs one more time. The whole uh, reason why I'm doing this to myself is that a well needs to be a few stories deep to be, uh, to be, Make sure that it doesn't provide muddy water. If your well is only one story deep, the mudder pro the, the water provided is uh, going to be muddy, and uh, that is bad. You don't want that. So that's why I'm digging this deep. There we go. And I think we have to go one level deeper, and then it's good. And then we good to go. And you see already that a lot of water is uh, plummeting downstairs now. That's exactly what we were after. That's a clear working as intended there. Yeah, now see that. Get there. But the situation is slowly growing dangerous for the miners here, but. Uh, we are also pretty done with the whole topic. This place will ultimately be brim filled with water. So we'll have lots of water to work with. If you make these systems large enough, you, you can even have fishing pools. Eventually fish will move in and all pretty groovy. So we're going to be happy with that. Don't need to uh, dig out more than that. Come on, let's, uh, let's quit these. I'm happy with that. We have a nod, a, a, a nice large uh, pond in the making here. We have already a nice reservoir. Clothier is stricken by melancholy. 
New people arriving and the person arriving is immediately stricken by melancholy. What is happening? Will Nomal Rakust! Hey, that's uh, some people. They they seem to be all eager to go for the old fortress tour, and I'd say we're going to be welcoming these new arrivals at the beginning of the next episode. So I thank you all a lot for being around. Again, I'm very sorry and sad about losing a couple of episodes, but I think we did just fine. That all being said, thanks for being around, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as usual, check out the description box, which is filled with lots of other fortresses that I've played, and there's even another saga there, and check out Discord, come on by for a chat, check out Twitch, come on by for a hangout on my streams, and if you feel like it, support the channel via Paypal, Patreon, or buy me a coffee, or check out the YouTube channel's membership system. It's all up to you. I just want to say a big thanks to all the supporters of Icon Gaming. You guys are really, really amazing. And a big thanks to you right here, right now, watching this video until the very, very bitter end. I deeply, deeply appreciate you folks. See you all next time and have a good one.